Hi, thanks for signing up for our virtual open day and for letting us know you're interested in finding out about our construction courses. My name's Kirsten, I'm a member of the marketing team here at the college and I'm here with my colleague Scott today. Hey Scott, do you just want to introduce yourself? Good afternoon, my name's Scott. I am a member of uh, the West Lothian Carpentry and Joinery Lecturing Team and Construction Department. Uh, I teach in SVQ, Carpentry and Joinery level and uh, Advanced Craft level Carpentry and Joinery. That's great, thank you. Uh, so Scott's got a little presentation to run through just now, so we'll just get that started. I'm just going to briefly discuss the construction courses at West Lothian College. And uh, first of all, I will just, just quickly discuss the partnerships that we have uh, with outside agencies and other organisations as well. As you can see along the bottom of the screen, uh, we're in partnership with Morrison Construction uh, and the CITB and also West Lothian Council. And uh, we share information and uh, coursework and also uh, student placements and uh, uh, places at college as well for different courses. Uh, so uh, we, we do a lot of good work with each other and we hope to continue that in the future. Some of our courses uh, involve only carpentry and joinery and other courses involve other trades from bricklaying, electrical, uh, roof painting and decorating and uh, roof slating and tiling as well. The courses are the title of the courses are called Introduction to Carpentry and Joinery and Construction Skills at a Skills Level. And that, that would be on a Tuesday to Thursday uh, basis during the week. Uh, other courses are Introduction to Construction Skills, NPA Introduction to Plumbing, uh, NPA Construction and Pre-Apprenticeship Carpentry and Joinery. Slightly higher level courses, uh, once you progress through the intermediate courses and the entry courses are apprenticeship carpentry and joinery courses and dry lining courses and also uh, advanced craft carpentry and joinery which are, uh, again, these are courses you can progress on to once you have completed uh, the previous early courses in the intermediate course, the college. The route map for these courses involves uh, at the first stage coming in at a school's introductory level to learn construction techniques and practices and uh, you will also learn some hidden disciplines as well, i.e. timekeeping, uh, socialisation, uh, team working, uh, communication and working together. Uh, this will lead on to introduction to construction skills and NPA construction and pre-apprenticeship carpentry and joinery and also NPA introduction to plumbing. These are all classed as intermediate range courses uh, moving up from the school's introduction level and uh, you will get a slightly more uh, mixed uh, level of courses and this will involve also uh, brickwork, electrical, uh, painting and decorating and carpentry and joinery as well as well as plumbing. So you can get a range of subjects and a range of topics and uh, you can see what one suits your interest and uh, these qualifications are very good, they're very well recognised within the construction industry and employers also. Uh, so it's a good it's a good foundation level to start off with. Moving from these courses you can 
work towards a construction apprenticeship level courses and uh, these involve carpentry and joinery courses and also dry drywall lining, fixing and finishing courses as well. These are more employer based courses where uh, the college would liaise with employers uh, and other outside agencies like the CITB and monitor progression <coughs> uh, uh, and it also gives you an opportunity to move to another level beyond which is uh, advanced craft carpentry and joinery which is a higher skilled level of course but once you have completed the school's introduction level the introductory and pre-apprenticeship level and NPA intermediate course level uh, you should be have enough skills to uh, enjoy the higher level courses uh, apprenticeship and the uh, advanced craft level alternative routes if you do prefer or do like an academic route at the at a higher level as well can involve a NC built environment and NC civil engineering, which can lead on to HNC architectural technology and HNC construction management. These courses are more academically based and they will give you a further grounding into the construction industry and it will give you a, a, a grounding and a foundation level knowledge to a semi-management level, technician level or perhaps even self-employed level working on your own where you'll have to look at planning, design, health and safety and the uh, construction practices and principles of construction at a, at a higher level. No, that's great. Thanks very much for running us through that and for telling us a bit more about the subjects. So we've had a couple of questions, so we'll just go on to them now. Okay, so the first question is, do I need to buy any special clothing or equipment before I start the course? No. PPE will be supplied at college uh, to work in brickwork workshops and carpentry and joinery workshops as well. And even if you are, if you go into the dry lining course, so PPE includes uh, boots and overalls, and that will be supplied from the college. Uh, you would maybe be using it every week after that, so maybe an idea to look after it once you do have it, or keep it in a safe place would be a, a, a good idea. But you don't have to buy uh, PPE before you come to college. That's great, thank you. Uh, the next question is, how are the courses split between practical and theory? Most of the courses are split more towards practical because it's gearing towards practical trade based skills. So about 70-80% practical would be most of where the coursework lies. Uh, you would have a, 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 a smaller amount of theory work uh, based in the classroom and that would be uh, just to kind of build on your skills and uh, learn a wee bit more background construction, principles of construction and uh, construction techniques just to kind of underpin what you've learned in the workshop. But most of the courses are 70-80% uh, practical based. That's great. Uh, so the third question we've had is how are the courses assessed? The courses are assessed by uh, mostly by observation and the uh, checklist. So the assessments are set out in a manner that the students would follow guidance and uh, assessment regulations and the practical work would be carried out towards this, uh, these guidelines. The lecturer would then assess the practical work by observation and uh, discussion and also 
by agreement by taking photographs as well to gather photographic evidence. Uh, the assessments would then be marked against a checklist that is set out and, oh, and then uh, with a bit of oral feedback and written feedback, uh, the lecturer would then discuss with the student how well the student has carried out that practical work by giving uh, oral feedback. That would happen throughout the project as well. Uh, and uh, also at the end with some written feedback. So uh, observation, checklists, guidance, and uh, written and oral feedback are the main assessment methods. That's great. Thanks very much for that. So that's all the questions that we've had submitted. But if anyone does have any further questions, you can contact us at any time by emailing marketing at west-lovian.ac.uk or by contacting us on the college's Facebook page, Twitter page or Instagram page and we'll get back to you there. Okay, so thanks very much for joining us and thank you Scott for talking us through the construction area. Thanks everyone, bye. Thank you.